Hello students today we will read the next chapter the stolen bacillus so listen this story carefully listen to the story abridged from the stolen bacillus by herbert george wells this again said the bacteriologist slipping a glass slide under the microscope is a preparation of the celebrated bacillus of cholera the cholera germ the pale faced man peered down the microscope he was evidently not used to that kind of thing and held a limp white hand over his free eye i see very little he said touch the screw said the bacteriologist perhaps the microscope is out of focus for you eyes vary so much just the fraction of a turn this way or that Ah now i see said the visitor not so very much to see after all little streaks and shreds of pink and yet those little particles those mere atoms might multiply and devastate a city wonderful he stood up and releasing the glass slip from the microscope held it in his hand towards the window scarcely visible he said looking carefully at the preparation he hesitated are these alive are they dangerous now those have been stained and killed said the bacteriologist i wish for my own part we could kill and stain every one of them in the universe i suppose the pale man said with a slight smile You scarcely care to have such things about you in the living in the active state On the contrary we are obliged to said the bacteriologist Here for instance he walked across the room and took up one of several sealed tubes Here is the living thing this is a cultivation of the actual living disease bacteria He hesitated bottled cholera so to speak a slight gleam of satisfaction appeared momentarily in the face of the pale man the bacteriologist held the tube in his hand thoughtfully yes here is the offending bacterium imprisoned only break such a little tube as this into a supply of drinking water say to these minute particles of life go forth increase and multiply and death mysterious untraceable death death swift and terrible death full of pain and shame would be released upon this city the pale faced man nodded eyes shone he cleared his throat these anarchists rascals said he are fools blind fools to use bombs when this kind of thing is available i think a gentle rap a mere light touch of the fingernails was heard at the door the bacteriologist opened it just a minute dear whispered his wife when he re-entered the laboratory his visitor was looking at his watch i had no idea i had wasted an hour of your time he said 12 minutes to 4 i ought to have left here by half past 3 but your things were really too interesting no positively i cannot stop a moment longer i have an engagement at 4 he passed out of the room repeating his thanks and the bacteriologist accompanied him to the door and then returned thoughtfully along the passage to his laboratory how he gloated on those cultivations of disease germs a disturbing thought struck him he turned to the bench by the vapor bath and then very quickly to his writing table then he felt hastily in his pockets and then rushed to the door i may have put it down on the hall table he said mini he shouted hoarsely in the hall yes dear came a distant voice Had I anything in my hand when I spoke to you dear just now pause 
Nothing, dear, because I remember. Blue ruin! cried the bacteriologist and immediately ran to the front door and down the steps of his house to the st- Minnie, hearing the door slam violently, ran in alarm to the window. Down the street, a slender man was getting into a cab. The bacteriologist, hatless and in his carpet slippers, was running and gesticulating wildly towards this group. One slipper came off, but he did not wait for it. He has gone mad, said Minnie. It's that horrid science of his. The slender man pointed hastily to the bacteriologist, said something to the cabman, the apron of the cab slammed, the whip swished, the horse's feet clattered, and in a moment the cab, with the bacteriologist hotly in pursuit, had receded up the vista of the roadway and disappeared round the corner. Minnie hastily put her bonnet on, seized his shoes, went into the hall, took down his hat and light overcoat from the pegs, emerged upon the doorstep and hailed a cab that luckily crawled up. Drive me up the road and round Havelock Crescent and see if we can find a gentleman running about in a velveteen coat and no hat. The man in the foremost cab sat crouched in the corner, his arms tightly folded and the little tube that contained such vast possibilities of destruction gripped in his hand. He had only to make sure of the water supply and break the little tube into a reservoir. How brilliantly he had planned it, forged the letter of introduction and got into the laboratory and how brilliantly he had seized his opportunity. He craned out of the cab. The bacteriologist was scarcely 50 yards behind. That was bad. He would be caught and stopped yet. The cab swayed and the anarchist half standing under the trap, put the hand containing the little glass tube upon the apron to preserve his balance. He felt the brittle thing crack and the broken half of it rang upon the floor of the cab. He fell back into the seat with a curse and stared dismally at the two or three drops of moisture on the apron. He shuddered. Well, I suppose I shall be the first. A little drop was still in the broken end of the tube and he drank that to make sure. It was better to make sure. Then it dawned upon him that there was no further need to escape the bacteriologist. In Wellington Street, he told the cabman to stop and got out. He stood on the pavement with his arms folded upon his breast, awaiting the arrival of the bacteriologist. Viva l'anarchy! You are too late, my friend. I have drunk it. The cholera is abroad. The bacteriologist from his cab beamed curiously at him through his spectacles. You have drunk it. An anarchist, I see now. He was about to say something more and then checked himself. A smile hung in the corner of his mouth. He opened the apron of his cap as if to descend, at which the anarchist waved him a dramatic farewell and strode off towards Waterloo Bridge, carefully jostling his infected body against as many people as possible. The bacteriologist was so preoccupied with the vision of him that he scarcely showed the slightest surprise at the appearance of Minnie upon the pavement with his hat and shoes and overcoat. Very good of you to bring my things, he said, and remained lost in contemplation of the receding figure of the anarchist. You had better get in, he said, still staring. Put on my shoes? Certainly, dear, said he. You see, that man came to my house to see me, and he is an anarchist. No, don't faint, or I cannot possibly tell you the rest. And I wanted to astonish him, not knowing he was an anarchist, and took up a cultivation of that new species of bacterium I was telling you of, that infest, and, I think, caused the blue patches upon various monkeys. 
and like a fool, I said it was Asiatic cholera. And he ran away with it to poison the water of London. And he certainly might have made things look blue for the civilized city. And now he has swallowed it. Of course I cannot say what will happen. But you know, it turned that kitten blue. And the three puppies in patches. And the sparrow bright blue. But the bother is, I shall have all the trouble and expense of preparing some more.